Warning: The power supply type showcast in this video uses AC mains voltage. Mishandling of the power supply can lead to fatal injuries. So today in this video, we'll open this LED battery and see what's inside. Basically, it just contains a driver circuit and a LED array. So this particular LED battery which I have worked for three years and now it stopped working. Initially, I had plans to open it and make it run again so I tried my best but still it worked but not for long which is obvious because I don't have enough equipments to do the process so I just throw the idea of fixing it so today in this video I'll just explain what could go wrong and there is nothing we can do to fix it even if we fix it is a waste of time and worthless So in order to open this LED we have to just remove the grey color plastic out of it and we have to apply a gentle force to pull this LED strip. So this is the LED driver and here we can see that something just came out of the capacitor. Even this electrolytic capacitor is bulged. Mostly this happens because of internal short circuit even though the condition is like this the circuit works totally fine because it gave me 120 volt. So now the problem is with this LED array. In a traditional way, we have to check each and every LED with the help of our multimeter diode test. But there's a trick which you can use. Instead of checking each and every LEDs, actually there are 96 LEDs in total. The whole strip operates on 80 to 100 volt, but there are 98 LEDs, means the LEDs are arranged in series and parallel combination. So first we need to understand, then we can find out an easy solution. So I used Proteus software to simulate these LEDs. I used 96 LEDs which resembles the LED array which I am currently working with. I tried to redraw the circuit of LED array. Each LED is rated to operate under 3.3 volt. So totally we need 80 volt to operate this. I am trying to show that 24 LEDs are connected in series and there are totally 4 groups. Each group 24 LEDs are connected in series and these 4 groups are connected in parallel. In order to find the fault LED, we have to check the first 3 LEDs or the last 3 LEDs. By just checking 6 LEDs, in most of the cases we will find out the faulty LEDs in this series. Because it is a series connection, if one LED goes bad, the rest of the LEDs will stop working some of the LEDs can be easily spotted out because they get burned and some LEDs leaves a mark on them. I managed to figure out 7 to 8 LEDs which are damaged and I used a black marker to point it out. On our left you can see a vertical line which denotes this LED is faulty and on the right side we have another LED which I have mentioned 400. Actually it's a short circuit LED with a resistance of 400 ohm. But care should be taken while replacing. The replaced LED should have same rating. In order to remove the particular damaged LED, we have to just use the solder iron and place it behind the LED. Fixing this LED is a total waste of time and worthless. Don't waste your time trying to fix this LED. Even if you manage to fix it, it won't last for long means after maximum of 10 to 15 days again the condition will become the same for learning purpose you can open it and see what how things work the learning process begins with the data sheet there are several websites who provides the data sheet try to download the data sheet from the manufacturer itself and i have given the link in the description for that according to this circuit the first part is a emi filter this is a basic model of EMI filter. In this module, they have attached even more additional resistors to make it even more safe and stable. The inductors allows the low frequency components to pass through. Low frequency is our AC mains. So 50 Hz is a low frequency. Most of the EMI noises starts from kilohertz range and goes up to few megahertz. 
So this inductor will filter all the high frequency component. And we also use X and Y type of capacitors in our, in our filter designs and to safely send the high frequency components to the ground. The data sheet itself provides a typical application diagram and this driver board uses the exact same circuit. Basically this driver supports a lot of features but I don't have enough time to explain all of that so I'll just explain the block diagram. The pin 1 comp which is called as a loop compensation node. So this pin 1 helps to maintain a constant current for the LED array and it just requires one external component which is a capacitor which is connected between 1 and 2 the COM pin and the ground pin and pin 3 which is a VCC pin it has UV yellow under voltage lockout and V reference under voltage lockout is an essential feature because when short circuit occurs the voltage goes below the rated voltage and this V reference they use a fixed V reference so generally this IC operates on a wide voltage range a normal potential divider circuit will not provide the best solution for V reference so they use a set of regulators to provide a regulated reference voltage and most of the cases these V reference volt stays around 1.25 volt this V reference voltage is often given to the comparator circuits and now we have pin 4 which is feedback pin so this pin generally monitors the output voltage pin number 5, 6 and pin number 7 and 8 these are the drain and source pins of the internal MOSFET this is a power MOSFET so the small IC has internal power MOSFET which is a great thing but MOSFET generally produce more heat LED consumes nearly 20 watt so definitely we have a considerable amount of heat so when this MOSFET heats the entire IC will get heated up necessarily we have to use a thermal regulation compensate the changes which are occurred due to raising temperature and we also have a current sense which will monitor the amount of current sent to the circuit and the logic and protector circuit this block diagram will monitor all these parameters and change the duty cycle to adjust the voltage and current of the output thermal regulation is different and thermal shutdown is different so in most of the linear voltage regulators we have a thermal shutdown mechanism here the thermal regulation helps to reduce the output current as you can clearly see the output current is reduced when the driver is over temperature so instead of performing shutdown it directly reduces the current actually the shutdown mechanism will be even more good but if that happens we have to wait 5 to 10 minutes to restart again so maybe for a purpose they didn't add this feature if over temperature occurs then it takes 5 to 10 minutes to restart again because this IC will wait until the temperature comes to its normal state below the critical state so this cooling process can take 10 to 15 minutes so for the 10 to 15 minutes the IC won't work so until then we have to stay without lights if you like my video like share and subscribe